everybody, welcome back. Unit 11, actually chapter 11. It's in unit eight of all the stuff the College Board is telling us that you need to know for AP stats. So we're gonna talk about M&Ms today. And why M&Ms? Because there is a percentage, according to the M&M Mars co uh, company, of the types of M&Ms are what percentage they happen to break down into. Interestingly enough, if you do some digging, it differs if depending upon what side of the country you are. The, the company in the west side does the west side of the part of the country does it a little bit different than the east side. But that's beside the point. Um, what I have here is the data from what we did last year. So as you can see, we had 66 brown M&Ms, 92 yellow M&Ms, 101 orange M&Ms, 73 green, 74 blue, 66 red for a total of 507. So then what we're going to do is we're going to see how those that distribution that we observed compares to what the M&M &M Mars Corporation says that we should do. So the first thing that we need to go through and do is this, once I can find my mouse, is that we're going to go through and talk about what your hypotheses. The hypotheses are really only two things. Either the null hypothesis says the, col the color distribution of M&Ms is true. So what they tell us is what we see, we're all good. So what's the only alternative for that? It's not true. Now, one thing you may have already noticed is that we're doing this for um, categorical data. They're fitting into categories of red, blue, green, yellow, that type of thing, okay? And so that's what chi-squared has ended up using, but we'll talk more about that over the next couple of days. Now, in terms of the setup, we're gonna talk about what would we expect to have happen. So if we had 507 M&Ms, how many of those should be brown, yellow, orange, green, blue, and red? And the way that you go through and do that is, I'm gonna take the percentage, so in this case, 13% times 66, and we we would expect 65.9 brown M&Ms out of our 507, so we were actually very close there. You're gonna do the same thing for the yellow. If I take 20 per, or 14% of the yellow, multiply that by 507, I should come up with 71.0. Oh, I got 92. And you're gonna to continue to do that through all. So that's how we came up with the yellow, the orange, the green, the blue, and the red. Okay, pause where you need to. Now, much like what we did with standard deviation, we're gonna say, we're gonna measure how close these things are to what they're expected. So trust me on the data for this, but, so like here for brown, what we ended up doing is that we have 66, we had 65.9, so there's a difference of 0.1. So we square it. Remember, by squaring it, kind of, what, as I said with standard deviation, it helps take the negative out of it so we can sum these all up. And then we're going to take this value here and we're divided it through by our expected value. So in this case, it's 0 0.00002. You're going to continue to do that for all six colors, in this case here. Okay, and as we just did this in class, as I showed them the old, old data, this right here is what you should get, like for example, for the blue, blue we should have had, what, 74. And we ended up with 121. Okay, so you'd have 74 here. Oops. And then we would have our 121.7 here, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So we do all that math, boom. We add all of that up. And so what we end up getting So we go through and we're going to add all of that up. And so what we get down here is our test statistic of 25.7183. Man, that seems like a really high standard normalization like a T-score or a Z-score is raised. You're correct. However, we're not doing either of those. We're probably doing something called a chi-squared test, even though we haven't talked about what chi-squared is yet. So what we're going to end up doing is we're going to take that number and we're going to actually plug it into table C. Okay. Now, before we do that, let me do this. I got ahead of myself, sorry. So what would you explain for values that are very close to what you're expected? These values right. over in this table so then are we, be very close to Coming zero. back I mean, here. Look at our 66. We had 66. This number right here is darn near zero. So if we get what we want, we're going to get really, really low numbers. Frame rate left We don't right. get what we want. So for example, here, notice you get a really, really large number. And that this the blue M&Ms are what drove most of our 25. 
okay? So that's how that goes there. And that's actually the other question over here. Now notice what ends up happening here, okay? What you end up doing is for this number, you're gonna to go to table C. Table C looks like this. Now, for your degrees of freedom right here, it's always one less than the number of categories that we have. We had six categories. So, six minus one is five. So we are going to be down here and looking in this line here, all right? Much like what we did with the T tables, we're gonna to look to see what two values our number falls between. So we had a number of 25 point something. Now notice it hits right here. The furthest we go is 22. So our 25 and change, come on. falls here. So that means that our value is going to be, has a less than a point zero 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 five shot. How do I know that? Well, if I look up here, this is the lowest number that I have. So if I'm further to the right from that, that means my percentage is further to the right than point zero 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 five. So when we come back over here, this number here is so low that what ends up happening is that effectively we can then reject the Null hypothesis. So there is something goofy going on with our M&Ms up here. Now, as I said, it turns out that M&Ms produce west of the Mississippi. I think the factory's in Denver, but it could be somewhere else. Actually equally distributes all the colors. So it's one out of six chance of getting a brown, yellow, orange, green, blue, and red. Okay. The ones east of the Mississippi, and I believe they're made in Pennsylvania, actually hold this percentage that we're seeing up over here. All right. So anyway, we're going to stop this now. We're going to formalize this here in a minute. We'll see you over there. And then tomorrow, we're actually going to talk more about M&Ms. So anyway, I'll see you in a few.